G'day, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Specs and Specs, the music quiz show that likes rainbows on roses but isn't quite so sure about whiskers on kittens. <laughs> Our two tin captains each and every week are the chart topping Alan Bro and the bee bopping Miff Warhurst. Alan's first guest tonight is a Canadian singer and songwriter whose unique style has been compared to Aretha Franklin, Kate Bush and Dolly Parton. That makes her one part soul, one part pop and two parts country. Please welcome Anne Breen. <laughs> Alan's second guest tonight is an English comedian and radio host who also has obsessive compulsive disorder. Wash your hands very thoroughly, dry them, wash them again, then put them together for John Richardson. <laughs> Smith's first guest is an Australian singer, songwriter and artist who has been frontman for the church for 30 years, which makes him the longest serving Pope since Pius IX. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Steve Kilby. <laughs> Smith's final guest tonight is a comedian and radio announcer who recently broke his leg in an on-air stunt and had to spend the next five weeks lying in bed watching television while people brought food to him. <laughs> Admittedly, he was planning on doing that anyway. Welcome back, Dave O'Neill. And we'll start with that, Dave. Yeah. Are you OK? I'm OK. I'm still on crutches. I'm in a wheelchair, but I, I broke my leg. I was jumping Dicko on a BMX bike. Mm -hmm. I, thank God he's lost weight, because I would have clipped his gut. <laughs> <laughs> I landed really badly, and my leg just went like that. And, oh. and so I, I've got, like, 16 uh, pins in my leg now and two long poles. Can you actually show the cameras? What? My scar? Yeah. Sure, if you get a shot impressive. of it. Um, hang on a sec. Oh, here we go. Don't fall over. No, I'm oh, not going to fall over. It's OK. Here we go. Oh, this is like a strip. <laughs> Very sexy. This is my brace that I wear all the time. And that's, uh... Look at that. Oh, oh, yes. oh wow. Like and the surgeon's here who did it, so, uh... He travels with me everywhere now. <laughs> um, uh, now, Anne, also, welcome to Australia. Thanks. Uh, I understand you're quite fond of Australia, are you not? Especially when it's your summer. I also understand that you have a few favourite Australian terms. Well, I just have some that I had wrong. I thought everyone was saying good onion. <laughs> good onions? Good onion, mate. Oh, good onions? Yeah. Well, I would always be like, oh, you know, I travel here by myself and all these older people would be like, oh, good onion, mate. <laughs> what you should say is nice beetroot. Um, <laughs> that's what John, you've only just arrived in Australia. Have you picked up any Australianisms? Only, like, just general swearing. <laughs> oh. Someone, I was watching Breakfast Telly this morning. Someone said, shit. <laughs> It's like, jeez, you'd lose your job for that in England. Yeah, it's a fair bit of shit to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Queen OK? Can we do that? <laughs> no, shit's fine. Shit's, we can say shit, shit, shit on the ABC. It doesn't matter, does it? But not, like, on the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that has been a regular. It's been a shitty day. <laughs> Uh, Miff and Alan are going to pick a topic that everybody will be quizzed on. Your choices tonight are love songs, torch songs, novelty songs, and breakup songs. Alan, you can pick the first topic tonight, please. We'll have love songs, please. Anna. Certainly, Miff. Breakup songs. All right, we'll start with love songs, though. Everyone on your buzzers. Let's Thank play Specs and Specs. Your first question for one point. Which Die Straight song shares its title with a Shakespeare play? Yes. Romeo and Juliet. About star-crossed lovers, Romeo and Juliet. First point of the show. Oh. <laughs> Interesting, the line, uh, money for nothing and your chicks for free, also appeared in Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Next question for two points. I'm going to read out a song lyric. Oh. I need the singer and the song title. Quote, let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. It's Lady Gaga. Yep. And it's, um, Roma... romance. What is it? What is it? Bad yeah, romance. Bad romance. Uh, no, it's not bad romance, actually. Oh. I'll give it to this side. Lady Gaga. Must be poker face. Uh, no, it's not poker face. Uh, love Peter. Game was the song oh, that I was looking for. <laughs> love Game. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering what a disco stick is, it's hanging between your mirror balls. <laughs> Finally, have a listen to the 1971 song, Wild Horses. I need three things. The writers of the song and at least one person. Yes? Steve, go. Uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richard. Yes. And, and now at least one person, which should be easy. <laughs> we didn't get the whole, whole list. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can only assume what Susan Boyle? Oh, about <laughs> Anita Palander. Well, no, it's not, but Susan. you're on the right track, so I'm going to ask it to this side. At least what one person they claim inspired it. One person Keith they Richards. claim inspired it. No one, no one, well, no, 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 um, um, Sorry, Jim Morrison. Marianne Faithful. Marianne Faithful oh. is the answer I was looking for. Three points out of three. Yeah. Oh. Right, now, Anne, did you 
as a student, conduct an experiment in which you played different types <laughs> of music to plants yes. in order to find out I did. which music plants grow better to. Yes. And what did you discover? What was the result? Uh, that um, rock music grew plants better than classical music. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I also had a group that I talked to and a group that I shouted at. <laughs> which, ones, which ones grew more? The shouting ones. What did you shout at them like? Come on, grow! <laughs> Thank God it was you doing it. I can't imagine, you know, if I was 14, my parents walked past my bedroom and heard me going, Come on, grow! <laughs> Have you ever been tempted now that there are new styles of music to try different genres? Because I reckon if you played emo to a rose bush, it might cut itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get so many letters from emos now. <laughs> Dear ABC, just because I'm emo doesn't mean I cut myself, OK? <laughs> Do emos write letters? No, I'm not, anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not having that. No. <laughs> they tweet, don't they, emos, these kids now? I don't oh, these with the kids tweets. now. <laughs> <laughs> Old father time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you tweet? I have twat in the last... <laughs> In the last month or so, I've begun to tweet. Yep. But I think I'm going to stop. Really? It's, yeah, I spend all day thinking about things to write, and then I write one, I think, why did I tell anyone that? <laughs> massively yeah. tedious. Do, do you, Steve? Do you I do. Um, oh, I've, yeah. I've got an internet guru, and I'm on... I blog, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I tweet, whatever it, there is. You're eBay? You're on smart Granny. <laughs> smart, sorry, what Smart Granny? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I've stopped doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to mention this later, but I'm going to bring it up now because we've kind of ended up in that direction. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook. Are you mm -hmm. on Facebook as well? Yeah. You're now. friends. Yeah. Are we friends? <laughs> no, I don't think we are. Should we be? If you like. How okay. about you just ask each other right now if you can be friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you can come over and poke me. <laughs> if you confirm that I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, um, it's from a guy that I went to high school with. Mm. It says this, quote, I know ACDC rocked Sydney last night, but in a quiet corner of Newtown, the church celebrated 30 years of great music with an acoustic gig. Pure heaven. I think um, ACDC were quivering in their Swiss mansions after they <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on to breakup songs. Your first question for oh, one oh, point. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. In 2004, the title of the hit breakup song by the Black Eyed Peas told a lover in two words to do what? <laughs> yes? Take off. No. No. This side? Shut up. Shut, Shut up is up, exactly the answer I was looking for. Next question. Have a listen to this 70s breakup song for two points. Name the two singers. You don't sing me love songs. Yes. Ne Neil Diamond and Barbara Streisand. Yes, yes. two points oh, out of two. Oh, well done. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, next awesome. question. This is Carol Bayer Sager's famous breakup song, You're Moving Out Today. Today the landlady, she said to me. What did she say? For three points, name three items from the lyrics that must be moved out. Uh, yes. No idea, but what, I mean, I'll give it a go. Go on, then name um, three. When was it written? Oh. The 1970s? Uh, yes. OK, so a beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> a lava lamp. <laughs> and, and a disco ball. <laughs> You're not going to be surprised to find out none of those are on no! there. Up, he goes, pick up your bags and... and bags isn't your there. Your boots? Is there boots? Pick up your boots. No. The list of lyrics I would have accepted are... Toys, oh, that's right. Pretty Boys, oh. 45s, oh. Alibis, 61 oh. Cassettes, oh. Dirty Looks, Songs That Have No Hooks, Rubber Hose, Spanish Flies and Funny Cigarettes. No uh, wonder she wanted it to move out. He was a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, we've all had bad reviews in our time. No, have we? <laughs> <laughs> What's the well, worst you've had, Dave O'Neill? I got um, an overweight lightweight. <laughs> but your review had an interesting twist to it, Steve. Yeah. Um, we were going to do this gig and the roadies drove up and had a look at it and said the stage was too dodgy, so we didn't do it. But the next day we got a kind of a mediocre review for that gig because the guy had to make his deadline and he'd already submitted it and oh. there it was. <laughs> so what, what was said about you? Oh, I just said it was usual stuff, what you'd expect. It have not changed much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in a good way, you didn't even turn up and he still kind of liked it. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the first round, the scores are... Uh, really? Uh, 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 Miff, Steve and Dave are in front on seven points. Alan, Anne and John are on a point. <laughs> oh, 
teams have to buzz in and identify the tunes being performed live in the studio. Tonight, your songs are being played by Anastasia Russell Head on the harpsichord. Aww. Song one, please. Yes. Phantom of the Opera. It's Phantom of the Opera. Oh. 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 Didn't sound like Phantom until right at the end when it really sounded like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've listened to Phantom a fair few times, which I'm not ashamed to admit whilst wearing a turquoise top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next song, please. All right. Sing it, baby, sing it. Oh, I heard that we don't say should have been so hard together. Could have lived this together, together, baby. It's better this, this way. way. That's um, um Careless Memories. Careless Memories by George Michael. Careless Whisper. Careless Whisper. Careless Whisper by George Michael. They all just sound like green sleeves. <laughs> This incredible craving for ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? Uh, next song, please. Yes. It's Children of the Revolution by T-Rex. Yes, it is. Next song, please. It's time to start the music. Is it the Muppets theme? It is the theme from the Muppets. Yeah. 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 Uh, final song, please, Anastasia. Golden Brown. It's Golden Brown. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, that's what it Ladies and gentlemen, Anastasia Russell Head. The schools are uh, Alan and John have prepped up to three points. Miss Stephen Dave still in front, ten points. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to show each team a photograph. You have to tell me whether the person in question is a musician or a serial killer. <laughs> Alan, Anne, and John, here is your first photo. Is this person Ooh. a musician or a serial killer? Anne? Oh, you've had quite a violent reaction to him. <laughs> I just think how many of the people I know could be in this contest? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think he's a musician. What do you think, you think he's think, a musician? I think he looks like he's quite small. <laughs> Where are you heading with this, Detective Richardson? <laughs> well, it's a fact <laughs> that small people cannot kill. <laughs> yeah, so I think he's probably a musician. That young gentleman there is a musician. That is serial killer Chester Dwayne Turner. <laughs> Say bigger than I thought. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Dave, here's yep. your photo. Musician or serial killer? Oh, yeah. Oh, he looks great. He's a musician from he's Australia in the like the 80s. That guy. Oh, really? <laughs> he's probably supported your band, this dude. <laughs> he's got, Every he's night he slays he's... the audience. <laughs> I don't reckon he's a serial killer. He looks too. Well, hey, I'm charming and suave. Although it could be a trick. It could be a trick. Because he's got awesome 
I think hair. I think he's a killer. All right, well, we'll go with you. Steve. All right, he, he looks too much like a musician to be a musician, okay. so we're going to go with serial killer. That is serial killer Peter Manuel. Yes! Oh. <laughs> uh, Alan, Anne and John, here is your second photo. Musician or serial killer? Oh. Man. He looks like a killer, so mm -hmm. using myths logic that worked before, he'd be a musician. But... <laughs> I've had two serial killers in a row, and you'd expect there to be a musician, so then it should probably be a serial killer. <laughs> okay. A straw pole. I think he's a musician. Musician. I reckon that picture in colour, taken with a lovely sort of heathland behind it. <laughs> he's a sheep herder. And like a yeah, sheep dog next to him and a little yeah. pipe. Yeah. Lovely old, that's old Ray, that is, singing his songs. Yeah. OK. <laughs> that man there is a farmer. Yes, option C. Option, yeah, um, musician. That is famous American folk singer, musician Tom Paxton. Oh. <laughs> he is. Finally, Mr. Stephen Dave, your final photo. Musician or serial killer? He's got good hair. He's got um, good hair. Could be a young musician. Could be famous, like a sort know. of 60s muso. Yeah. What do you think, Steve? You hang out with these I types. think I think that that haircut is suggesting he's a musician, but I think he's a killer. What is it? Yeah. What is it that suggests it's a musician? Because he's got style? that kind of beetly sort of hair yeah. style. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he's a killer. I think they're trying to mislead us to Again. think he's a yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> killer. That is Academy Award-winning pianist, conductor, and composer, oh, musician oh. Andre Previn. Oh, At the end of that round, the scores are Alan and John on four points. Miff Steve Dave in front, eleven points. One member of each team will be singing well-known songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Your teammates have to identify those songs. Uh, and you'll be singing first for Alan and John, and you'll be taking your lyrics from the 1962 text Competition and Monopoly in the British Soap Industry by H.R. <laughs> Edwards. That's your book. Those are your songs, ladies and gentlemen. And friends. So well. Thank you. First song, please. The point of departure is... Essentially the same as that of the classical fact of the separation of the total mark for a commodity in this sphere of industry and the absence. Oh, of all this ladder um phenomena then no <laughs> does anyone know does anyone know no sorry that was marvin gay let's get it on oh, oh my god well, that was i really think we all had the same thing when you started singing everyone just in the room went holy shit <laughs> imagine if she'd sung it with the lyrics let's get it on it's really <laughs> I think that the fact that the lyrics are about product differentiation is the only reason I'm not having a fag now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, song two, please. Um, it is this awareness of the threat of new competition If prices are set too high, which governs the equilibrium Tendency of the system, the controlling factor is the long term consideration on the demand side. Elaborated yes. in a material world. Yep. And I... uh, the final song, please. The basic raw materials of the soap industry are natural oils and fats in Great Britain. These are mainly imported, as discussed in more details elsewhere. This raw material is thus the principal component in the cost of production of soap, varying from the order of 50 to 80 Percent. If the buzzer doesn't the work, how will we make her stop? <laughs> no, what was it? What was the song? Um, you shook me all night long by ACDC. Yes, it is. Yes. 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 
Uh, Steve, <laughs> you will now be singing for Myth and Dave, mm. and you'll be taking your lyrics from Introduction to Terrariums oh. <laughs> by Barbara right. Joan Grubman. <laughs> <laughs> That's your book, those are your words. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Kilby. Right. Am I allowed to sort of slightly sing it in a voice like the people who did it? Or am I sure. Or not? Is that, yeah, of course. Yeah. Am I allowed to gesticulate? You can and... do whatever you want. OK, I won't yeah. be doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Choosing plans for your terrarium will prove a delightful and challenging job. Will they be small with dark green oh. leaves? Or will the lacy look of a fern catch your fancy? Mix and match when you pick your plants, but just be sure that they need similar growing conditions. It is wise to consider the temperature and moisture requirements. It's, um, settle down, get a job, take it easy, you're no help me for no. her. <laughs> It's Cat Stevens, or it's like yeah. a folk singer. Oh, it's it's father and Son? It's yeah. Father and Son. Uh, song two, please. Next, you will need a placer. These are needed only for the narrow necked containers. Their function is to hold the plant while you lower it oh. into the container. Oh, there are many which will work well, and you will find the best for you in a short time. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Somewhere. It's somewhere from my okay. side story. Well Final song, please. OK. Taking a walk in the woods can be a fascinating botanical experience. <laughs> Mosses, ferns and selaginellas and country lichens all there to capture your eye. <laughs> Any of these will survive in a moist atmosphere of a terrarium. If you are allowed to do so, take home plants from the woods, the forest or the park. Yeah, it's David Bowie. Is it Spaceman or no? No, it's, um... Spaceman, what is he? Oh, there's someone waving over there. Who is it, Starman? If you think you know what it is, give me a sign. Starman? Yes? Um, it's Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy Stardust is what I was looking for, yes. How we get the point? Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Kilby! <laughs> At the end of that round, the scores are Alan and John are on seven points. Miff, Steve, Dave still in front, 13 points. Yes. Oh. Here we come. Team, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Revived in the 70s and featuring the song T for Two is the musical comedy No No... Uh, yes? Nanette. Yes. Oh in 2010, the English band that brought folk music to the top of the local charts... <laughs> Yes? Mumford and Sons. With Little Lion Man was whom? Mumford and Sons. In 1996, which American hip-hop act covered the Roberta Flack classic, Killing Me Softly? Yes. I know this. The Fugees. Yes. The Fugees. I knew the 2009 that. film Nowhere Boy is based on the teenage years... Yes? Uh, John Lennon. Of oh. which Beatle? John Lennon. Oh, How many times did Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee marry Pamela Anderson? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh let's see. A couple of times. I think probably... It'll be at least twice, though. They've been made twice. On the beach. Slutty outfit, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> then it was on the boat, once. wasn't it? Uh, yes, once. Oh, well done. In the Aussie crawl song, Beautiful People, the garden's full of furniture, the house is full of oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, plants. Plants, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many A's are there in Bananarama? <laughs> now we have to count? Yeah, hold on a sec. B-A-N-A. Yeah, yeah. Five. 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 Five? Yeah, five. Uh, yes, five. Are your final question? Oh, OK, we can still make it. <laughs> final question, true or false? In June 2000... <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, we have a 50% chance. Go okay. on, I'll give you this if you get it right. It started off with in June 2000 and something, and there's definitely been one of those. <laughs> It must be true. The rest of the question was, in June 2009, the B-52's frontman, Fred Schneider, officially announced that the band were dropping the apostrophe from their name, thus changing it from the B-52's to the B-52's without an apostrophe. <laughs> and that was indeed true. Oh. <laughs> At the end of the show, the final scores were Alan and John made it up to 11 points, but Miff, Steve, Dave won the day 17 oh. points. Please thank all our guests for tonight, Anne Vreend, John Richardson, Steve Kilby and Dave O'Neill. Yeah.
of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. Yeah. We'd like to leave you tonight with the cast of the Improv Theatre hit Spontaneous Broadway as they give us a musical recap of tonight's show. Thanks for watching Fix and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. <laughs>